Hi, everyone. I'm Peter. I'm a product engineer at Postdoc. And I saw most of the hands up uh, who know what Postdoc is. Uh, but those of you that were too shy and just follow everyone else, put your hand up anyway. Uh, Postdoc is an open source product analytics platform for understanding your users better and helping you ship better products. So we have a ton of products. We have uh, event tracking, session replay, feature flags, A-B testing, data warehouse, CDP, and then what I work on, LLM observability. So that's not what I'm here fully to talk to you about today. I'm talking to you about what comes after observability, which is evals. Uh, does anyone know what I'm talking about when I say evals? Cool. So the gist today, I'm going to introduce you to Max, which is Postdoc's very own AI assistant. We're going to go over evals very quickly for those of you in the room that don't know. Um, I'm going to tell you why I don't think the current state of evals is enough, or at least why it's not enough for us building Max. And then how we're using it and what we're working on for the future. And then right at the end, I've got a special teaser demo of something that may be coming in the future. This is a postdoc dashboard. And Max is the little hedgehog down in the bottom right. And we can ask in natural language a question to Max. So in this case, what is my week over week percentage growth of uh, users? We can see the chart there. Um, super simple question. Uh, but maybe we want it as a percentage. Max has full context of the dashboard and all of the insights and data in your whole post-hog environment. So we can see here, 7.6%, we get the number, Max can read our data. Great. But what else can Max do? Max can generate insights for us. So rather than having to manually create insights within post -hog, you can ask Max to create you trends or funnels or other types of insights. And it will scan your data, understand how you name your events, understand the properties on those events and build those insights for you. You can also ask it to help you write HogQL. HogQL is PostDoc's own flavor of SQL, which we use to, to query the data. Uh, it generates it. We can also use, post, uh, use Max to help change things within our PostDoc environment. So on our Sessions Replay product, maybe you want to filter down to a specific thing. Rather than having to press all the buttons, filter by specific uh, questions, you can ask Max to do that and it will apply the filters to your session. So what next? How do we know Max is being a good hedgehog? This is where evals come in. Evals are the process of measuring if your application acts how you want it to and performs and how it performs in a real world environment. Common examples of evals are correctness, semantic similarity, uh, hallucination, and relevance. Uh, and you know, how do, we, how do we actually do these evaluations? How do we measure? The most common method today is LLM as a judge, which you can think of as an AI marking its own homework. Essentially, we ask one model to evaluate the output of another model by a specific criteria. So you pass the model's input and output from one call to another and ask it to score you, basically. And this works well, gives you sort of general good direction but it is still essentially just a vibe check. You know directionally if you're getting better or worse, but it falls down in some really important key ways. It's non-deterministic. The same as our models, our evals are still non-deterministic. So given the same input and output and the same eval, you can get different scores. They might be similar, and we have good techniques like uh, G-eval or DAG that make this at least more consistent, but it's still non-deterministic. It also doesn't help us with unknown unknowns. So the common joke here is a QA walks in to test the bar and he orders one beer, 10 beers, 100 beers, 1,000 beers, signs off the bar, all good. First customer walks in, asks for a glass of water and where the toilet was and the whole place collapses. If you don't know what to test, you can't, uh, you can't tell how your application is doing on it. And finally, eval platforms are separate from all of the data that allows us to measure if our business is doing well. So a score might, an eval might tell you, great, your app isn't hallucinating or your app is doing this. But what effect does that have on your user retention? What does that do to your conversion funnel? If you don't connect evals to your product data, you can never answer these questions. So how does PostDoc do it today? We use LLM observability to capture every trace and every generation that goes through Max, every conversation. Uh, you can see another view of it here. And we can look uh, and understand what happened, 
we use a sort of beta version of our eval product where as we ingest events, we do exactly what I just said. We use LLM as a judge. We collect data sets and we do that in our CI pipeline, but it still doesn't give us the confidence that Max is always doing what we want him to do. It also, uh, as we get bigger and more and more traces are going through Max, we can't read all of them. We can't actually tell. So the evals are just a start and that takes us on to what we're trying to do as the next step. So what is the future of evals? I think the LLM as a judge scores stay, but they're just the first layer. I think the future can actually have richer signals and spot problems that the vibe checks will never catch. You can actually ask the unknown unknowns and then use that to connect it to your post hoc data to see how your changes to your prompts or models actually affect the metrics that matter to you. How are we going to do that? One of the ways is semantic clustering. Semantic clustering is where we embed every prompt and every answer that comes through our system and then cluster them, surfacing them in distinct groups. Each cluster will represent on the input side, similar prompts, tasks, or questions. And on the output side, common responses, answers, or failures. So you can see all of the input clusters that generate the output cluster of I'm not sure, or I can't answer that, because that output will all be co-located in a cluster together. And then you can see which input inputs lead to that, showing you where in your application you should focus. It also allows us to do a bunch of other really clever things like semantic entropy. Semantic entropy is the inverse of what I just mentioned. Semantic entropy is looking at one output cluster and seeing how many output clusters that maps to. So one input cluster to many output clusters, which has high entropy, is a proxy for hallucination, or at least an inconsistent user experience. We can also do drift detection, which is seeing how various clusters change or move over time. That's a really good indication of maybe not what the problem is, but at least where to look, which prompts are failing, which prompts are actually starting to do something different. And we can detect emerging intents. If someone starts to use your LLM-based product for something that you didn't intend or don't expect, you can see that early because those will fall into non-existing clusters. That's also the same thing that we can do if a trace comes in, it doesn't fit into any cluster. It's an anomaly. We can, that gives us the one trace out of the thousands, the needle in a haystack to look at. Uh, we can also, rather than summarizing one conversation, we can summarize a cluster of conversations. Um, that allows us to see sort of broadly what categories of people are using our applications for beyond the things that we were already testing. So what this does is this takes Postdoc's uh, LLM product to rather than asking questions, going to Max and asking him about your data, we start to create these clusters uh, to, to tell us what parts of our application to do. So rather than asking questions and getting back um, answers to tell us what to work on, it takes us the, the step further and actually generates the work that we should be focusing on, the areas that we care, that we should be caring about right now. And this is the little teaser of where we can go with that. Throughout Postog, there is a range of tools now such as the, the semantic clustering that we're building, as well as session summarization of thousands of session replays. We have error tracking. All of these can actually change it from a pull of a user requesting data to a push of telling a user what to focus on and generating work for them. So if I play this, we can see here what an interface might look like for these events coming in. When we generate work, it can come into a backlog, into a format that we're familiar with. Issues, tickets, you know, to, 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 to start working on. These can be visualized, let's see, as a title and a description. And we can then connect this to a code base. And what you should see here, another way to visualize it, we, we're generating work to do that can then go into your backlog. We can drag it into to-do. This is then in the background, an agent can come and pick up this task, move it into in progress for us and start working on the task in the background. Once it's done, 
And you can see here, this is using a Claude code execution environment to, to actually execute the, the code changes. Um, skip forward a little bit. We can see they will move into uh, testing when it's completed the code change. And then hopefully they, we can come over and we can look and it's opened a pull request for us. The pull requests uh, and the changes that this makes are automatically using Posthog to capture events and using feature flags so that we can roll these changes out safely and gather more data, which feeds back into the system to create that full loop of a self-improving, self-healing system. Cool. I think that's my time today. Uh, went a little bit technical, but yeah, any questions? Uh, so when it generates the graphs, like showing you, is that like a machine generated image of the graphs or does it interface with like an Excel type sort of program? As in the semantic clusters? Uh, earlier on when it was like you were asking it to show like sales or something like that and it showed like the graphs. Yeah. Um, no, so that uses Postdoc's Insight Builder. So in the same way in Postdoc, you can manually go in and create graphs and create insights based off your data that you're capturing. Um, Max leverages the same Insight engine there and just creates, uh, creates it in line for you. I'm curious if you have any um, non-chat centric use cases inside of Posthog that you're using LLMs for, and if so, how are you running evals against those? Um, so evals is not a product that we've rolled out yet. Okay. Um, so we're using it just sort of internally uh, on ours, which is obviously a chat use case. But people use observability for sort of a, the, the LLM observability product for a whole range of use cases. Um, one use case that uh, I saw today, which is really interesting, is a uh, hardware device that takes pictures of birds that fly past a camera and then notify and sends that to Gemini to classify the bird. Um, so yeah, some, some other use cases that are not chat based. Yeah, so the demo at the end you showed was basically a self-improving loop. So how far have you pushed that? You know, is it the case where I can just ship a product, add post hog, and let it optimize MRR, like, you know, find product market fit or not buy it? Um, the the use cases that we've tested on that seem viable at the moment is anything that you would sort of use a background agent or Claude code sort of for now. So uh, maybe slightly better than that because we're also trying to give a lot more context, the full error track, error stack traces and such, and trying to write the prompt. But yeah, that's sort of the, the limit of it now, what you would currently use these coding agents for if you were doing them manually. Sounds good. Thanks, guys.